Lesson 16.1, Rate Expression and Reaction Mechanisms. Just for your revision, if you're unfamiliar with the mathematical rules for powers, times in and dividing them, uh, come back to this slide. This may help a little if you're trying to work out what's going on. So the rate equation is this mathematical formula that we determine only experimentally and that tell allows us to work out how fast a reaction will occur. So we have different terminology for that. So for A, the reaction is first order, uh, the reaction is first order with respect to A, and for B it's second order. So if you increase A, double A, the reaction will double. If you double uh, the concentration of B, the reaction will quadruple. So it's second order, is second order with respect to B. The overall order is the other terminology, uh, and that's the total order. So add up all those little orders here, and you'll get a a three so it's third order. Most importantly there's always a constant here and that will change with temperature. Don't forget to write that constant because that's a common mistake when you're writing out the rate equation. So another difficulty here is working out what the units are for the rate constant K. So what you do is you rearrange this here. So what you do is you don't memorize these things. You know that the rate is moles per liter per second. So if you rearrange K you're going to get K as the rate, which is moles per decimeters cubed per second. Uh, and so as you increase the number of orders here, you put that on A, uh, you increase the number of concentrations, so moles decimeters minus 3. And so you divide that by moles decimeters minus 3. So you can see here, for the first rate, we've lost the moles decimeters minus 3 and then I've added another concentration at the bottom uh, and so you reverse this so this now becomes positive, these two become positive so they've added that. If you add a third thing in here uh, then you're going to have this uh, increased again so you add that so then it goes to a two, a six, a two here uh, and that here goes to a six always with the seconds minus one. So don't memorize this, know how to work it out. So how do you determine the rate? Well, you do a whole range of experiments just as uh, we covered in uh, the standard level chemistry and we do an, a tangent to the line. And here's another example of how it's done. Uh, this is the instantaneous rate. What you, what you really want is the initial rate, the instantaneous rate at the very start. So you need to be able to remember these graphs and I think probably the hardest thing is remembering what goes on the x and y axis. So if it's a first order, uh, what you have, the first order is the, the first reaction graph, so you need to know the concentration versus time. So what you have is if the substance doesn't have any effect on the reaction whatsoever, what you'll find is the concentration of this will just decrease slowly over time as the reaction continues. But if this actual chemical has an effect on the reaction, then there's sort of this exponential. If you lose it, it's going to have a double whammy. You're not, you're, you're not only losing it, you're also losing its ability to continue the reaction because it's basically becoming more and more dilute. So the reaction is slowing at an exponential rate. So all you can really say here is that if it curves, it's first order. It could be second order depending on how much it curves. So that's why we're going to go to the next one that you also need to know is concentration versus rate of reaction. This is a little bit more logical, a little bit more easier to understand. If something has no effect on the reaction, it doesn't matter what the concentration is, the rate will stay the same. So that makes a lot of sense lot more for, the, for the zero order. Now if it's first order, doubling the concentration will double the rate. The slope of it will depend on the K, so you're going to have a nice straight line. I don't know how steep it is, it'll depend on the K. If it is a second order or third order, then you get a curve because increasing this will have, depending on what you have here, it has an exponential effect on the rate. So as you increase, you should expect an exponential curve. So the concentration versus rate uh, is a lot more clearer in being able to graphically determine whether it's first, second, or th uh, zero first or second or more order of reaction. So this is one way that you can get the rate as you get the change in concentration over time. You can take individual gra uh, tangents and so just a, a summary here. So you can either plot the concentration time graph and calculate the points on the curve or you could down for this one here. This is what we're going to do. You come and get, commonly get questions on this. We're going to change the different concentrations and see what the effect of the rate is and then work out the rate equation from that and we can get the orders 
uh, a little bit easier that way. So this is the first problem. In an experiment between A and B, the initial rate of reaction was found for various starting concentrations of A and B. Calculate the individual orders for A and B, the overall order of reaction, the reaction rate, the value of the rate constant, and the, and the units of the rate constant. So I put them in different colors here. So let's look at A first. So let's keep B constant, and let's go and triple A, experiment one and two. If we triple A, we triple the reaction rate. So that must be first order. Now let's look at B keep A constant in 1 and 3 and so we double the, the reaction uh, we're quadrupling the rate so that must have been to the power of 2 that allows us to, to write out the overall rate then if there's a 1 and a 2 would be 3 and now we can go to C and write the overall rate of equation rate equation there and so that's K uh, concentration A concentration of B squared and we can now sub in values for that and that gives us uh, the K the rate constant is 4. Now because we have three concentrations there so we need to divide the rate constant by three concentrations and that will give us the units for the rate constant. Moving on to rate mechanisms here. Now in a reaction there will be different steps that occur and what you're trying to do is work out which one is the slowest one and so which one will determine how fast the entire reaction occurs. Now what we've just done with our reaction, uh, with our rates of reaction, we've, we've helped to determine experimentally uh, what we think might be happening by looking at the order of reaction. So here's an example here. If you have Plaza A that's slowing down the cars or the people or whatever this is, it must be people, uh, that's going to be the rate determining step. Uh, so the whole speed of this entire reaction is determined by this first step. Similarly, if it happens to be plaza B that actually is the really slow reaction, then it doesn't matter how fast you are at A, the rate that occurs at B is going to determine the overall rate of reaction. So these are called the rate determining steps. If you look at this particular reaction here, we've done the experiments to find out that the, the rate equation is here. Uh, however, CO2 is not involved in that. Uh, all we're saying is that the rate depends on NO2, so there must be some sort of slow reaction that relates to NO2, and there must be some sort of second step that involves CO that's quite quick. So what we do for these is we suggest possible mechanisms by writing out possible equations. Now this, these are all radicals, so they're going to be quite reactive, and so this here is uh, it's considered fast, which matches in, and this is slow. And if that is true, then the rate will equal K NO2 NO2, which is NO2 squared, which is what we found experimentally. So it seems plausible as a mechanism. All right, also you've just basically got one oxygen popping off here, and you've got one oxygen popping off here. So you really want to just have one thing happening at a time, because that's more likely than several things instantaneously happening. So that that concept here is here. So a, a union molecular step is where a single species reacts to form a product. A bimolecular step is a collision between two. And generally, we avoid thinking that A plus B plus C will instantaneously join. Uh, that's highly unlikely. We're going to get either AB form or AC form or BC form and then it's going to react with A or B or C. That seems to be more likely than th the chances of three things coming together at the same spot. Okay, so when these things form, they can either be in transition states or intermediates, as we've talked about before. Uh, just a review of that. Uh, so intermediates uh, have a minimum PE energy and can actually exist and be uh, separated out. Whereas transition states only occur for uh, only occur in a, a theoretically theoretically really uh, in an instantaneous point in time and they instantaneously break up uh, and so they're at a maximum potential energy they're very unstable so here we have an example here this is sort of semi-stable here so we can separate it out so that's an intermediate uh, and the transitions here they just happen to uh, form this very strange complex that's extremely unstable and just break up straight away. So the transition states are at the top and intermediate is down here. Another thing you might note is that catalysts here, something that can create this intermediate will be a catalyst because it decreases the activation energy here 
so it can just do it in two simple steps rather than have a high activation energy and just do it in one go. So how do we determine what the reaction mechanisms are? Here are a few examples. So here we have a slow reaction here and a fast reaction. So what we do is we just worry about the slow reaction. Always don't worry about the fast because that's not going to be the one that slows us down. And it's just a simple A plus B. Uh, so that's how we work it out. We just write the concentrations of A and B and that's an overall order of two. This one here, again we just get rid of the fast reaction. We have the slow, uh, so it's A and X. The problem is we don't start with X. We start, uh, so we need to substitute the X with the A and the B. Uh, and so what we have here is A, A, B, and so we put it's A squared. So the overall action is, overall order is to the power of is R three. Another example, again, don't worry about the fast one, that's not going to determine the rate. Uh, the slow one, it's a, it's, a, uh, it's a plus a, so that gives us a to the power of 2. Same deal, fast, we don't worry about, that one's just b, nice and simple. And here we have the slow reactions, so it's a squared plus b, we don't have uh, b, uh, we can't substitute it out, uh, and so it must be present in the initial reaction, and so we leave it in there. Okay, this one's a little harder. Uh, they're actually going to ask you to try and guess uh, how something like this forms. So what you have to do is basically just do some random guessing. Like I said before, A plus B, A plus B, you can try any of these ones here. All right, now experimentally you know it's A plus B, so you know C is not uh, is zero order. And because of that, quite simply, this one allows you to, if this one was slow, uh, sorry, fast, it allows you to limit it out, and this, if this one was the slow, well then it's very easy, it's, it's A, B, just like the answer has it. If it's one of these ones here, and say, so C, it doesn't really count, so this one must, these must be the fast ones. Uh, you would get uh, B and then A, C, and A, C would be substituted into A, C. So you'd have A, B, C as, as the rate, K, A, B, C, same here, uh, A, and then BC needs to be substituted out with BC, so you'd have the same thing down here, ABC with a K. So none of those would work out, so it must be this one here. So if we did the rate for this one, uh, to NO2 squared, that agrees with this one. If this was the rate determining step, then there'd only be one NO, N2O2, so that can't be correct. If this was the rate determining step, then it would have this and this and then this would be substituted uh, with this. So that rate agrees as well. So we substitute, to get this we need, we depend on this concentration here, so that's squared. So they both agree. It would seem most obvious that an oxygen would pop off though. And then the N to the O joins to that and then the whole thing pops off over here. It makes a lot more sense than this. This doesn't make much sense because you've got N to uh, N O N O combining with another N O O and somehow you've got them combining so the O twos come off and then the N twos come off and that so the the chances of that lining up and then just popping off like that in one step so there'd have to be twos here two O twos the chances of that lining up popping off and producing that are very unlikely all right it's far more likely you can just get an oxygen to come off and then the next thing that happens uh, is an oxygen joins onto that and then the oxygen pops off. So I'm going for two here, even though both are, are theoretically possible.